So we're going to take two blocks and you might want to put a blanket over the first block because you're going to have your feet on top of that. And then the second one is going to be like supported bridge. So watch for a moment. I'm going to come down and I'm going to put this block under my sacrum like we do for supported bridge. The second block is going to go under the feet and you're going to come into this bound angle shape like this. So it's a bit of a big hip opener. If that doesn't feel good, just do everything off the blocks. Okay, so I'm going to watch you guys for a moment so you can need help getting that set up. So one block under the feet, one block under the sacrum. And again, if that's too much, you're gonna go ahead and come off the blocks. Another option, however, is if you wanna grab a second set of blocks, since there's not a big class today, you can put a second set of blocks underneath your knees for a little bit of extra support. So then we'll come into the bound angle position. and let the knees drop over. And then go ahead and just come into your breath. Starting to slow your breath down. And feel that opening into the inner thighs. This position allows there to be a little bit of a deeper opening through the adductors, inner leg. Also, a little bit of opening through pelvic floor. And it helps to open the area of the abdomen a bit so we can bring that breath nice and low in the abdomen. We're going to stay here for just a little bit of time. And throughout our practice today, I'm going to share a couple of readings from my teacher's book. So my teacher's book is called The Practice is the Path. And this is a chapter about, um, you know, slowing down in our practice and in our lives. Big bird just flew into my window. Okay. So speed is the antithetical to the practice of mindfulness. When we move swiftly, the world passes by in a blur. When we hasten through experiences, we fail to notice the nuanced expression of each passing thing. When we strive to get to our destination, the forward rush is all consuming. And we only think about getting to where we are going. In the fast track experience, we do not look around or take anything in. Caught in the track of speed, we lose feeling and become anesthetized to the world around us. Speed inhibits contemplative awareness and stunts capacity for insight, which we call vipassana. It is difficult to see clearly when we are moving lickety split down the track. So when we slow down on the mat, it can be really beneficial for our nervous system, which is beneficial for overall health and state of well-being. And it helps us to slow down off our mat as well. So now we're gonna very, very slowly start to bring those knees up, but we're gonna place our hands toward the inner thigh and give a little bit of resistance by pressing on the inner thigh and slowly drawing those knees up. And then let the feet come flat and the knees come all the way up. Okay, now we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna let the knees start to fall open. And I want you to go really slowly. And as you start to roll toward the pinky edges of your feet, I want you to try and drag your feet apart isometrically. So they're not gonna go anywhere. It's just a little extra bit of engagement in the muscles. 
And once you get open, as far as it feels right for you, pause, pull the feet apart isometrically. You'll feel a little bit of engagement in those outer hips. And then slowly start to bring those knees back up and add that little bit of drag on the feet. That little bit of drag helps to engage the muscles in a different way. Come all the way up, let the feet come flat. And now one more time, start to open the legs. Drag the feet apart. Then for that slow burn, and then once those legs are open as far as it feels comfortable for you, go ahead and pause. Press down into the pinky edges of your feet and drag your feet apart isometrically. Good, and then let's go ahead, bring them back up and set the feet flat. Staying with the feet on the block, Take the right knee, drop it out to the side, just the right knee. Press into the pinky edge of your foot and drag that foot away from the center, engaging the outer leg, the outer hip, and then slowly bring that knee back up. And then just the left knee, let the left knee drop out slowly to the side. And once it's open all the way, press down and drag away from the midline. Good, slowly come up. One more time on each side, dropping the right. Once you're down, press and pull. This time, try to lift your foot off the block. And hold it there for a breath. And then foot down and bring the knee back up. Last time, second side. We'll add that little lift of the foot. Drop the knee open. Once it's open, pause, press down, drag away from the center. And then see if you can lift your foot up off the block. Good, release your foot. And slowly bring that knee back up to the center. All right, and then we're gonna bring the feet to the floor and just kind of slide that other block out of the way. So you can use your feet, slide that block to the side. We're still on the block on the sacrum. We're gonna take the legs out straight and you could do one leg at a time. You could do both legs. You could do halfway, like between straight and bent. And this opens up the front of the hip flexors. If this bothers your lower back, try tipping your tailbone up. Or if that still hurts your back, then please bend your knees again. Take your arms and reach them overhead. We're gonna just go for a full body stretch while lengthening those hip flexors. And now we're gonna bring right knee into the chest. Hug it in and now reach long through your left leg. Just make it as long as you can. And then we're gonna take the right leg up straight as you can and hold behind the back of your thigh. Flex your right foot, flex your left foot and gently draw your inner thighs towards each other. So you're not kind of rolling off the block. Hold it there, nice hamstring stretch, hip flexor stretch. And then we're gonna bring that right knee back in toward the chest. And then release. Let's bring the feet flat for a moment. And then take a full body stretch. Reach the legs out, reach the arms out. And now we'll bring the left knee in, give it a hug. And lengthen through the right leg. Push the heel forward, lengthen from the inner thigh. And then we'll take that left leg up straight, hold behind the back of your leg, flexing the feet. 
Gently hug in toward the center. One more breath. And then hug the knee back in. Both feet flat. Bend the knees. And then we're gonna lift the hips, slide the block out, set that off to the side and come down all the way. Take an inhale into a full body stretch. Exhale, hug your right knee into your chest. Stay here. Option to take an inhale and as you exhale, lift your head, chest and shoulders a little forward. If that's too much, keep your head down. And then float your left leg off the ground. Extend your right leg up straight and hold behind the back of the right leg. Take an inhale, exhale, lift a little higher, press down into your lower back. Good, release, hug that knee back into your chest. Inhale, full body stretch. Exhale, left knee draws in. And stay here or take an inhale, exhale, lift, head, chest, and shoulders. Float the right leg and extend the left leg. Hold behind the back of your thigh. Try to keep lifting a little higher, press in your lower back. And then release, hug that knee into your chest. Inhale, full body stretch. Exhale, draw your knees in, give them a good hug. Okay, we're gonna roll to the side and we'll come on up into a seated position and you can feel free to sit up on your prop. All right, it's a lot of hip work, a lot of leg work today in this slow burn class. We're gonna come into our bound angle, soles of the feet together. And we can stay upright just like this with a tall spine, or you could fold forward, bring your hands down in front of you. Now we're gonna hold this for a little bit of time. So we're gonna be doing you know, less poses, but holding them a little longer today. And there is definitely benefit to doing that. When we move faster, it kind of gets our heart rate up a little bit. It's a little bit of a different yoga experience. But in more traditional styles of yoga, there's not a lot of faster movement like the vinyasa that we do, um, other than the sun salutations. It's more about holding poses, breathing, being present, slowing down, and preparing the body and mind for meditation. So go ahead and stay there a little longer and in some of the poses that we hold, I'll share a little bit more from my teacher's book. All right, so when we move rapidly, it is also difficult to be conscientious. Under the way of speed, we become desensitized to the environment. Whether in the use of natural resources, the consumption of food, urban development, or the building of sustainable relationships, we neglect to care for the world around us. When we move fast, we must inevitably watch out for ourselves. So speed tends to reinforce the importance of me, my, and mine. For we become preoccupied with our own individual advancement. So let's take two more breaths here. Sure, those breaths are nice and soft into the abdomen. And then after that second breath, very slowly start to come up. Take your time, we'll pause at the top. And then we're gonna bring the left knee up, foot flat, right knee still in bound angle. We're gonna turn toward that right knee and then walk ourselves out any amount over the right knee. Okay, and then we'll just take a pause there for a few breaths. So when we move slower, it creates more stability in our body. 
It also works on the deeper tissues of our body. We move quickly and we like engage our muscles and work really hard. It works in certain aspects of our being, of our body. When we slow down and we hold things a little longer, it works more on our fascia, it works more on our connected tissue. Some of you might remember last year we did like the creep class. We talked about the tissues creeping. So that's one of the benefits of slowing our practice down. And that can alleviate pain and inflammation in the body. Go ahead, slowly come up. And then just switch out, bring the right knee up and the left knee down. And then walk over and hold it here and breathe. When we slow down, it creates a lot of feeling of safety in the body and the nervous system. So when we move quickly, the body senses that we're not stable and it can tend to create more tension, more stress in our system. But if we slow down and we breathe consciously, it's gonna help the nervous system feel safe and it'll start to lower our stress hormones in our body. Sleep better, we'll eat better, we'll digest better. And it overall increases our vitality. All right, slowly start to come up. <coughs> Cross your legs, whichever leg in front that you like. Move your sit bones apart a little bit. Take an inhale and as you exhale, hinge forward. If you like, you can always stay upright if that feels better in your body today. And nice little hip stretch here. Take a couple of breaths. Let's see if you can imagine sending the breath down into your hips, your belly, your lower back. Staying present, try not to check out of the experience. So you could notice what you're feeling in your body as opposed to thinking about what you're gonna do later, what happened before. Slowly come up, <clears throat> pause at the top, and then just switch out your legs and we'll do the same thing with the legs in the opposite position. Make sure you widen out your sit bones and then hinge forward. Okay, so we'll stay there for a few breath cycles. Your jaw be soft, your eyes soft. Last couple of breaths. All right, very slowly start to bring yourself back up. Pause when you get to the top. And then let's go ahead, come around into tabletop position, all four. Feel free to pad your knees. We're gonna do our cat cows. And today, just start starting to see if you can slow it down a bit. So let's inhale and exhale. Now, while you continue, I'd like you to try and bring a count to your breath. So it could be like a four count or five count. Do that on the inhale and do it on the exhale. And see if maybe you can add a count or two as you continue for a few more cycles. So for many of us, slowing down can be anxiety inducing. If we're used to going really, really fast through life and we ask ourselves to slow down, it may feel uncomfortable. So just notice for you what it feels like to slow down. 
and it might take you know till the end of class till your body is like okay i get it <laughs> slowing down is good for me so at first it might feel a little strange so let's do two more rounds as best you can slowing things down Now, after you finish that second cycle, go ahead and come back to child's pose. And in child's pose today, can you take your knees nice and wide? So we're gonna go for that wide knee positioning in quite a few different poses today. So it gives a little bit more of that stretch to the inner thigh. All right, go ahead, come back up into your tabletop position. Walk your hands a little forward of your shoulders, and we're gonna lift up to down dog. Pause in your dog, and then bend one knee and let one heel come toward the ground. See if you can get your toes to be a little lighter and your heel to be a little heavier. A nice little stretch to the back of the calf, the Achilles. And then switch. Again, going nice and slow. Try to get heel heavy, toes light. Push through your arms, firm your arm muscles. And then release. And then from here, walk your feet forward, top of the mat. Inhale to a halfway lift. Exhale and fold. Inhale, arms reach all the way up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Okay, a couple half and a couple full sun salutations. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale to your halfway lift. Exhale and fold. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands to your heart. And one more time, inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Halfway lift on the inhalation. Exhale. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands to heart. All right, going through our full sun salutation, standing at the top of the mat. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold forward. As you inhale, step back, plank pose, top of a push up. You can drop those knees if you like. We're going to lower down in slow motion. So let's take a count of five. Lower down, four, three, two, and one, all the way down, reach back through your toes. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a big inhalation in your dog. And as you exhale, walk your feet forward, top of the mat. Inhale, your halfway lift. Exhale and fold. Inhale, reach up. Exhale to your heart. All right, let's go through that one more time. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, fold over your legs. Very good. Inhale, halfway lift, and then step back, plank pose, top of a push up, dropping those knees if you like. Now we're going to lower down. Five, four, three, two, one, very good, inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Big inhale in your dog, exhale, step, or even lightly jump, top of the mat. Inhale, your halfway lift, exhale, and fold. Inhale, reach your arms up. 
Exhale, hands to your heart. Good. Okay, make sure your blocks are at the top of your mat. Lost one of my blocks. Where, there it is. Okay, blocks at the top of your mat. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, fold, bring your hands to your blocks. We're going to step the right foot to the back of the mat, move your blocks back, and drop down onto your back knee. From here, step the back knee back a little bit more, move your blocks back, and we're going to try and straighten the front leg. So you guys are on that hard floor there, please feel free to pad that back knee if you wish with the leg gaze. We're gonna hold here for a little bit, okay? So we're gonna be on the front heel, spread out through the sole of your foot, spread out through your front toes. <clears throat> Gently hug your inner thighs towards each other. You could stay here, or you can start to fold over your front leg. So that's gonna give you a deeper hamstring stretch. Now you might be able to lower your blocks, bring your hands to the floor, or another option that I've been playing with that's kind of nice is keep your blocks up high and then bring your forearms on your blocks. Okay, that's pretty deep stretch. So if that feels available to you, you could bring your forearms down and come into the fold that way. Then you have some support. So we're gonna stay there now for about three more breaths. Stay present. Drawing your sit bones back. And keep spreading your toes. After that third breath, if you're low down, go ahead, slowly come up and we're gonna re-bend into your front knee. Move your blocks a little bit forward, tuck your back toes, lift the back knee, you're in a high lunge. Okay, so make any adjustments that you need. You might need to step that back foot in a little bit. We're gonna now straighten both legs. So it's like a pyramid pose, but you're on the ball of your back foot. Okay, so the back heel is lifted. Gently hug your inner thighs in. Inhale, reach your heart forward. Stay here or fold over your leg. And again, depending on your body, you might be able to bring your forearms down and clasp your hands and let your head go down. You're gonna press through the front big toe mount. So any level you like with those blocks, sometimes hands to the floor is an option, forearms to blocks is an option. And we'll stay here for a few cycles of breath. Now, the key here is to not go so deep that we're feeling like intense, sharp pain or anything like that. You want to feel that kind of slow burn of the theme of the class today. There's a little bit of that burn of the stretch, but not so intense that it feels uncomfortable. And then you want to be really aware with your breath. So you consciously breathe, it'll help those tissues start to open a bit more. Okay, next inhale, bring yourself back up if you're down low. We're going to move those blocks forward, bend your front knee, and take a big step forward and fold over your legs. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, draw your hands to your heart. Good, all right, let's do the other side. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, fold, hands to blocks. And then we're gonna step the left foot back, move your blocks back, and drop down onto the back. Back knee's gonna scoop back a little bit so we can move the blocks back and straighten the front leg beyond the front heel. Spread out through your toes. Gently draw the inner thighs in and you can stay upright or go ahead and fold if it feels right for you. 
Okay, so if we fold and this causes tension in our backs, we're rounding our backs, it is more beneficial to stay up high. So listen to your body. Maybe lower the blocks, lower down to the floor or forearms. And we take a few breaths. Conscious breathing. Notice where you might be holding tension and see if you could soften it. All right, slowly coming back up. If you have lowered down, we're going to rebend into the front knee. Blocks need to move forward a little bit. And then lift the back knee. Maybe scoot that foot in a little bit. And then we'll straighten both legs. Stay upright or fold in, your choice. Inner thighs draw towards each other. And then you might lower down to the floor or forearms on the blocks. Press through the front big toe down. We tend to roll toward the pinky edge of that front foot. Then push a little forward with your front foot to send your hips back. One more breath. All right, so coming back up, if you have folded down, bend into your front knee, move your blocks forward, and take a big step forward. We'll fold over the legs. Inhale, reach the arms all the way up. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Okay, we're gonna face the long side of the mat. So I'll come forward, bring your blocks along with you, place them in front of you. We did kind of a lot of poses today that are split legs. So we did a lot of, you know, kind of the half split in those poses we just did. Now it's just more of a straddle split. So we'll have our feet parallel to each other. And you're gonna stand facing the long side so your feet are on your mat. Bend your knees a little bit and bring your hands to your blocks. Make sure those blocks are right under your shoulders. Pause here, press down through your feet and lift your toes off the ground, which will help strengthen the arches of your feet. And then draw your inner thighs, pelvic floor behind you as the crown of the head lengthens forward. Hold here another breath. And now we're going to turn the right toes out slightly, about halfway to the side, and start to bend the right knee, lunge to the right. You might move your blocks over to the right. If you can easily go to the floor, just take your hands to the floor. And we're going to hold this lunge for three breaths. Try not to collapse into your left foot. Draw more towards your pinky edge of the left foot. Maybe lunge a little deeper. All right, back through the center. Let's walk it over to the other side. Turn your left toes out, right toes are coming back in. Bend that knee and lunge. And you come as far as it feels right for you. You can lower down lower. You can stay up higher on your block. Press through the pinky edge of your right foot. Don't collapse inward. All right, walk it back through the center, parallel your feet again, and now bend your knees a little bit. See if you can either hold your shins, your ankles, or your big toes. And we'll bend the knees a little bit so we can fold over the legs. 
And then start to draw your sit bones up toward the ceiling. Let your head draw toward the floor. And we're gonna hold there for about five breaths. So keep rooting your legs into the ground. Keep drawing your sit bones up. Draw the top of the sacrum into the body and extend through the chest and the crown of the head. Last breath. When you are ready to, start to walk your hands back out. Heel toe your feet in a little bit so you feel stable enough to bring your hands to your hips. Knees are bent. Press yourself carefully up. Pause at the top. And then we're going to step those feet back in. Give it a little shake. All right. Top of the mat, facing forward. Yeah, bring your blocks around. You might need those later. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, fold over your legs. Inhale to your halfway lift. And then step back to your plank pose, top of a push-up. Feel free to drop those knees. And you're going to lower down in your five count. Really slow, building that upper body strength. Come all the way down to your belly and we're gonna come up into Sphinx posture. And slide your right knee out to the side. So again, we're getting into those inner thighs. We're gonna hold it there for a little bit. You might stay down on your forearms. You might bring your hands to the ground and straighten your arms. So that's gonna be more challenging on the back hip flexor, on your lower back. So if that doesn't feel good, you're gonna stay on your forearms. And we're gonna hold for three more breaths. You might engage the left glute and hip. That'll help a little bit with that lower back. Boy, it's windy out there today. I opened my window and it's really dusty. All right, slowly lower down. Slide your hands in, slide your leg back, pause. And then back onto your forearms, draw the left knee out to the side. And you can stay down here on your forearms or put your hands flat and straighten out the arms. Okay, so it's more demanding on our back, on the hip flexor. So if it's too much, you're gonna stay low. Pushing through your arms, hold one more breath. Good, slowly lower down, slide that leg back, press to tabletop. Give your hips a little circle or semicircle. And then we're gonna move back to that wide knee child's pose. Let your big toes touch, take your knees about max distance, and you could put your hands under your forehead if you like or you can stretch your arms forward if you want a bigger shoulder stretch there. That's pretty demanding, so listen to your body. Last breath. All right, slowly starting to bring yourself up. Take your time, 
We're going to come into a seated position. Back to our bound angle shape with the knees apart. Hold on to your shins or your ankles, wherever you can. We're going to lean back till we are bouncing on our sit bones, and we're going to pick our feet up off the ground. Hold your feet. That's it. Try to lift your chest and draw your shoulders back. Now you can stay here or we're going to try and straighten the legs. You have some options. You can keep holding your ankles. You can kind of go like that. You can hold your big toes and open the legs. You can also grab around behind the backs of your legs and try it that way. Okay, so any of the above or stay with your feet together, that's another option. That's it. And then try to lift your chest, take your shoulders back, reach through your legs, hold it here. Good, now try to let go of your legs, put your hands behind you, bring those feet back together, and then lower down. We're gonna take those legs out wide. So here's where some of you might want to be up on a prop, okay? So feel free to grab a pillow or your folded blanket, stick it underneath you. Because we want to find the tops of our sit bones, okay? So we don't want to be pitched back where we're going to tip back. We want to find right on the very top. So try to bring yourself up. That might be you need to bend your knees a little bit, and that's fine. Point your toes up toward the ceiling. We are going to turn toward the right leg. Take an inhale, you can stay right here, or exhale, start to walk over that leg. Then you're going to go as far as it feels right for you. Let your chin come in, let your chest start to go down toward your leg. And finding your breath. So again, find that place where you're feeling a stretch, but it's not too intense. And where you're not round, overly rounding your back. There's gonna be a little rounding when we're in a forward fold, but you wanna at least try to extend the spine a bit. Try to bring breath down low in the belly. All right, slowly, slowly starting to come up and pause in the center. We're gonna to go to the other side, start to turn your torso. Remember you can bend the leg if this is an issue for hamstring or lower back and fold over that leg. Let your chin come in, find that balance between a good stretch and not overdoing it. Work with a conscious breath is going to help the body release its tension. And we're slowing it down. You'll notice as longer you hold it, the body starts to allow you to invite you to go a little deeper. But we've got to work with the breath if we want that to happen. All right, slowly starting to come up, pause in the center. And we're gonna either pause here, staying upright, or we're gonna to start to come forward. Okay, as you come forward, start to rotate your pelvis so your sit bones and your tailbone are drawing back and your head and your chest are drawing forward. Now, depending on where you're at here, you might be able to use your blocks as a little bit of a head support. So you could stack your blocks up if you're close enough to the ground. If you're not, then you're just gonna work with where you're at. So use the head support if that feels right for you, or you can even put the blocks under your arms. 
use the props however they work for you. And then stay and breathe. Feel that slow burn on the inner thigh. Last three breaths. After your third breath, very slowly starting to bring yourself up and pause at the top. Okay, go ahead and draw your knees back in together. And we're gonna take the two blocks. Hopefully you guys have two blankets there. Do you guys have two blankets? Um, if not, grab a second blanket. So we're gonna put the one blanket over the two blocks. So it makes like kind of a mini bolster. And then you're gonna have your second blanket. I'm just gonna grab mine. Second blanket, we're gonna open it out really wide. So kind of like, you know, we do when we do semantics and we put it down over our mat. Can you take it out wide, maybe fold it in half one time. So this is kind of our key pose. We do a lot of opening for the inner thighs, the hips, all these kind of split positions. So this is a pose called downward facing frog. Instead of dog, it's frog. Um, we can also use a bolster if you wanted to, to get a little higher, but try it with this setup, see if it works for you. So two blocks together with a blanket on top, so you give it a little bit more softness. Okay, and then from here, we're gonna come and put our torso onto the bolster with your arms over top. So you're kind of like laying on it with your belly on the bolster. So I'm calling it a bolster, but it's the block blanket setup. Okay, so the front part is what we're doing with our legs. We're gonna see, remember when we're on our belly, we took one leg out to the side. You're gonna take one leg out to the side and see if you can take the other leg out to the side. You're gonna turn your feet out, so like frog legs. So this is the pose. It's a big opening for the inner thigh. Now, if this feels pretty mild to you, what I'd like you to do is shift everything back towards your feet, and then it'll increase that stretch on the inner thigh. So you just slide your block a little bit more, slide your hips back, Feet are turned out if you can. If this is too much, you can do it like child's pose, bring your big toes to touch. So that's another option if this is not good on your ankles. So that's why we want the blanket here under the knees. If this is still pretty mild, you're gonna take the props out of the way and just come down onto your abdomen. And then that you're getting closer to the floor, those inner thighs are stretching even more. So I'm pretty open because I did this practice yesterday when I was practicing our sequence for today. So don't feel like you gotta go where I'm going. Okay, listen to your body. If you're still feeling a little bit like you might go farther, just shift your hips back toward your feet. You know, that's slow burn, you've got three more breaths. You can come out if you need to come out sooner. Now the exit from this pose is a little tricky. <laughs> so I'm gonna slide forward and start to bring my feet together and then slide my knees together, let the feet come down and then press up and back. You might want to do a little hip rocks, little circles, and then come into child's pose. Nice work, everybody. All right, so go ahead and bring your 
yourself up. And you can clear your mat other than you want a pillow for your head. And if you want, take those blankets and make yourself something for under your knees. So sometimes it's nice to take a blanket and roll it up and that could go under your knees. Or we could also make a little shelf. So we take our two blocks and we put them short edge to short edge with the blanket roll on top. Okay, and then we'll be able to put our legs over this, but we're gonna take a couple more little quick poses before we come into Shavasana. So we can have that set up. Pillow under your head, blanket under your head if you like, and then we'll bring the knees in for a hug when you're ready. You might wanna do a little circling, a little rocking. Soothe that lower back. And then from here, maybe coming into happy baby, you could hold behind the legs, hold ankles or hold feet. Take those knees nice and wide, another stretch for those inner thighs. You can even go for the straight leg happy baby again if you want, like we did last time. If that's too much, stick with a regular happy baby. All right, let's go ahead, hug back in last time. And find Shavasana. We made it. So take your time. You can put your legs over that block blanket setup that we created. Give you a couple moments to settle. So I'll read a little bit more to you guys. Speed is addictive. When rushing becomes habitual, we hurry even when we have nowhere to go. Sometimes we go fast for no good reason. This is an example of how speed overwhelms the body. You may have had the experience of dashing to an appointment and getting stopped cold in traffic. You are anxious and continue your forward momentum, but all of the vehicles are gridlocked. While your car is standing still, inwardly, your body continues to rev forward. Your breathing becomes rapid, your eyes dilate, your heart rate amps up, and the speed gets trapped in your body. We have all had this experience. Somatically, it feels as if you're stepping on an accelerator while your engine remains idle. This phenomenon wreaks havoc on the body's internal systems. Like flooding a car's engine with gas, your body produces adrenaline, cortisol, and norepinephrine. Once this high octane hormonal cocktail suffuses your bloodstream, it is difficult to shut it down or reverse its effects. Simply put, you get stuck in the on position. And then speed gets trapped in our diaphragm, fascia, gut, arteries, and nerves. And off the mat, when students of yoga hurry and rush, it causes the connective tissues of the body to seize up, tighten, and limit flexibility. When speed, intensity, and exhaustion build up in the body, layers of fascia bundle together, inhibiting metabolic flow. This causes tenderness and pain in the tissue and blocks the free flow of movement in our poses as strain builds up in the shoulders, back, hamstring, or our feet.
So by the time we finish our practice, we start to perhaps get a little bit more comfortable with slowing down. Take a few more moments where you are. Right, so we're gonna take our time. Wanna finish with just a like a minute or two seated meditation. Really good way to end a slowing down practice. So let's take your time. Slowly returning with a deeper breath, some small movements. And eventually you can go ahead and stretch it out before coming over onto your side. Have a little pause. And then we'll return finding a comfortable seated position for yourself. And maybe that means sitting up on your props. All right, so we'll sit up nice and tall, broaden out through your sit bones. And if you're comfortable, you could close your eyes or find a soft focal point. Coming into your breath, with that lengthening up through the midline. So it's one of my favorite meditations from my teacher. So we're gonna visualize the skull and the upper torso as the shape of an hourglass. We'll visualize the upper sphere of the hourglass at your head, the narrow middle at your neck, and the lower sphere in the region of your chest. In your mind's eye, turn the hourglass upside down so that grain by grain, the sand trickles out of the upper sphere of your head through your neck and into the lower sphere of your chest. As the grains of sand drop from your head into your chest, generate a feeling of fullness in your heart. As you slow the rhythm of your breath, mark the slow descent of time, moment by moment, grain by grain. Let all thoughts, memories, concepts siphon out of your cranium. And with each passing grain, permit a quality of deep rest to penetrate the skin of your face, your scalp, your sensory organs, and your brain tissue. As you invert the hourglass, visualize your skull becoming transparent, like the empty space of the upper sphere of glass. The bones of the skull are delicate and exquisitely crafted to accommodate slight changes of pressure within the cranial orb. All too often when speed gets trapped in our body, the cranial bones constrict. This compromises the motility of the brain tissue, that is, its capacity to expand and contract naturally. So sense the way the bones on the side of your skull widen, the temporal, parietal, and sphenoid bones. Generate a feeling of lightness and spaciousness within these bones at the opening to your ear. 
The temporal bones are the primary bones in the body that signify the progression of time. As the hourglass of your skull empties, experience timelessness and space. Sense a luminous, translucent quality to your awareness and rest in the spaciousness of a deep, abiding stillness. All right, so let's go ahead and start to come back, finishing the meditation. And then we'll bring hands together in front of the heart space. Take an inhale, and as you exhale, bowing your head to your heart. Namaste, thank you so much, everyone.